Welcome back to my next playthrough series. We're continuing on with Baldrick and his bumbling band of adventurers in Zombicide Black Plague. This time, quest number two, The Black Book, which is located in this part of the map. We have a green door this time, which of course you can't go through until you find the green objective beneath one of the red squares, which are barely visible here. Another one right at the top. And you can't go through the blue door unless you have the blue key. We have three spawn points. One here, one, one at the top, which you can't see. Two, three. We have a green spawn point also at the top, which now you can see, uh, that activates when we find the green door key. Uh, and so how do we win this particular scenario? We are looking for the black book, obviously, to foil it. And there's a little bit of flavor text here, so I might as well read it. And it says, Now we know. It's not just our village. The zombie plague has spread across the land. What's going on? The necromancer we killed held notes in his laboratory, most of them referring to a mysterious black book. And other items of power exploring the surroundings could prove useful to you and better grasp about the threat you're facing. Of course, there are zombies along the way. Familiar faces turn to monsters. Hey, that one owed me money. All right, our objectives, of course, are to steal the black book, which we have to get to. We also need to claim both artifacts, which are in the crypts. And of course, the only way to get down to the crypts um, is from either the yellow crypt here or up in the top corner, as I keep trying to adjust the camera here, the blue crypt to get in here. And of course the only way to get in here is through the crypts. So we need to steal the two artifacts in the crypts. We need to get the black book and we have to feel the power. We have to get to the red danger level with at least one survivor. All right, and uh, I'm using Dead Eye Walkers again because they're all kinds of fun. I'm using the normal abomination even though I have the other ones. And I think that's it for sort of extra rules. And I'm only playing with five survivors because I guess I'm crazy. I don't know. Could use, you're supposed to use six, but hey, we're going to try it again with five. So let's take a look at Bald Baldrick's Bumbling Band and we'll see who we have this time starting with... And Baldrick. I'm not sure how this is going to focus because it's way up here. But anyway, we have Baldrick. We know what he's all about. He has spell casting. He's starting with Mana Blast. Uh, spellcaster lets him cast a spell once for free. Up new this time, we have Lord Bazaar. He's a little dwarf dude, and he's starting out with a hammer, uh, which rolls one die and hits on a 4+, plus, but does 2 damage at once, which means he can take out a fatty. His starting ability is plus 1 die roll melee. Alright, so he's new to our crew. And I'm just going to adjust the camera here, and we're going to uh, see... All right, and of next. course we have our recurring hero, Nelly. And, oh, she can put a dagger up here in her slot. Uh, Lord Bazaar can put a great sword into his slot, and Baldrick can put a sword up in his shield slot, just so you know. Uh, if you've watched the other two playthroughs already, then you're kind of familiar with, A, how the game works. I'm not going to go over the rules, and B... Uh, the character. So Nelly gets a free move action in her blue zone starting ability. She's also starting out with a hammer. And the reason we're after the black book is we met this individual here uh, named Arnaud. Arnaud? I don't know. No one can pronounce his name. He's kind of an outcast. But he does love carrying a torch. And he can put a torch here in his uh, shield allocation area, armor allocation area, I should say, not shield. He has plus one free search action, so that's pretty cool. He's starting out with a short bow, so he's our ranged guy. And he is uh, he has the knowledge of the book, how to destroy it or find it or whatever, so that's why we're tagging along with him. And up last is our Baldrick Band favorite, of course, and the crazed bloodlusting nun. And she has bloodlust melee as her first starting ability, and she's starting out with a short sword. So those are our five uh, heroes slash survivors. So I think with all that said, the introduction and whatnot, we're going to go down to the board and we are going to start. Uh, we're going to have one turn, I think, for this episode. And we'll call that intro in episode one. Right. So starting off, we start off with Baldrick. And uh, 
the turn the way that I went down the characters is the turn order for the game. So the first player for round one or turn one will be Baldrick. He's the leader of the band at the moment. Clovis, I guess, was uh, out uh, boozing and he is so drunk that he's not able to make this adventure. And so the dwarf Lord Bazaar from the inn decided to come with us instead. That's that's the idea anyway. And Genevieve had other things to do. So uh, we're basically following Arnaud's lead and we've replaced uh, the hungover Clovis with Lord Bazaar. All right, Baldrick up first. Uh, we get three actions uh, per survivor per turn. And of course, no zombies on the board to start because there aren't any. So we're just going to start. And I think probably the first thing we want to do is head through this door. So Baldrick's going to go, uh, well, he can't open doors with the mana blast, can he? No, it doesn't open doors. So it's kind of pointless for him. Well, maybe we should split up because, you know, that's always a good idea. Uh, so Baldrick, because he can't open a door then, he's going to head south. So he's going to go one, two, and three right here on either side of these doors to try and open them up and get to one of these uh, points uh, of interest and see if we can find either the blue or the green key. So that's basically in a nutshell. Aldrich's turn very quickly. He just did one, two, three moves. All right, up next is Lord Bazaar. I want to call him Lord Bizar, but it's Bazar. B-A-Z-A-R. Unless, yep, yeah, that's what it looks like. All right, he gets three actions. He has a hammer. He can open a door. He says, follow me. Well, let's open this door. So he's going to go one, two actions to here. And he's going to do a little bit of door bashing. And so his hammer is going to be rolling one die, hits on a four plus, so he'll bash the door open on a four plus. And of course we can't even see that because it's such a big, uh, sorry about that, so but our dwarf went one, two, he's going to try and open that door. He rolls a two, so ineffective. He smacks at the door, it does not break down, and that's basically the end of his turn. Nelly has a free move action. Well, Nelly is uh, hanging around more with Baldrick, so she's going to follow Baldrick down here to the south. So she's going to go free move action, and now she still has three actions. One, two, and she says, all right, Baldrick, let's try and crack open this door. But that could be silly because if there's runners back there, <sighs> then we might end up with uh, pain. So I th think... I think Nelly's going to hold off and not crack. Baldrick says, whoa, 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 don't crack open the door because we don't have any actions left or we're running out of time or whatever his excuse is. He bumbles and uh, she decides then, okay, probably not a good idea to open the door. Up next to Arnaud. Arnaud is more chummy with the dwarf and so he's going to head up north. Yeah, we're splitting up the party right away. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what happens. We're gonna, I'm just trying to open as many doors as possible right off the bat. Uh, so we spawn in the lower spawn zones. All right, Arnaud is off and running. And he has a short bow, which also can't open a door. But he's going to go join the dwarf. One, two. Here, or should he? Ah, no, no, no. He has a short bow. And he doesn't want to be... Oh, that's a green spawn point. Never mind. There's nothing going to spawn here anyway. So he's going to move up here with the dwarf. So very quickly, we're now up to Anne, the crazed nun. She has nothing to go bloodlusty on at the moment. And so does she want to join Nellie and Baldrick? Or does she want to go help out the two newcomers? I think... I think she's going to come down south with Nellie and Baldrick because there is a spawn point run right here. So she's going to go one, two, and three. So how we end off our first turn, for our heroes anyway, is Baldrick, Nelly, and Anne are all clustered down here, opposite these two doors. And our two nor newcomers, Lord Bazaar and Arnaud, are up at the north door. And the dwarf tried to crack the door open and failed to do so. All right, guess what? It is now... Zombies turn, spawn time, and we know how much fun that is. So spawn point, oh, I guess I can get them all on the map if I do this. All right, spawn point one, spawn point two, spawn point three. The first spawn point is, and we're in the blue zone, nothing in sight. So there's nothing here. 
which is uh, good. Up at the far north, we have one fatty shows up. Well, that's okay because we have our dwarf up there with uh, a hammer. So he can take him out if he starts getting too close. And the last spawn point right here, which is, oh, dead eye walkers. Hate these guys. I should take them out, but hey, we're playing with them. One dead eye walker. Well, that's not too big of a deal. So, yes, that went so quickly that I guess we might as well have one more turn for this episode and then we'll call it an episode. All right, up first, again, so we're going to change turn order. First player this time is Lord Bazaar. He was annoyed that his hammer didn't smack open that door, so he's going to try it again. Hits on a 4 plus, rolls a 6. This time the door doesn't stand a chance. He smashes it open with his hammer. So let's crack the door open. And yes, now we need to spawn in this room and in this room. So the first one right through the door is going to be one walker. That's not going to cause us too much grief. Uh, but what's the next spawn card? Oh, get real. A necromancer. Well, he's kind of boxed in a corner there. So that's could be good for us. Of course, a necromancer. The annoying thing about the Necromancer is when he spawns, he comes with another spawn point, which is what we call a Necromancer spawn point, and it immediately spawns. <laughs> so, not, he's not alone. He, oh, you got to be kidding. He comes with three, count them, three Deadeye Walkers. So, he is uh, surrounded by archers. Wow, that is unfortunate. Now the archers cannot shoot through two doorways. Oh man. So that was Lord Bazaar's first action. So what does he want to do with his second action? Wow. He could move in there and attack, but then he'll be hit by three Jedi walkers. So I think, oh my God, I think he's just going to sit there and not do anything. Um, which seems really pointless, but he doesn't want to be hit by the Deadeye Walkers. Uh, so I think he's just going to sit there. That's, uh, he cracked open the door and he went, whoa, there are way too many archers in the back room. So that's basically going to be his turn. He probably can do other things. He can exchange items with, uh, uh, Arnaud, but, uh, I don't think he's going to bother. So up next is going to be Nelly. And then we're going to have to readjust the camera. And take a look at our other crew. And All right, Nelly is right down here, and she too says, "You know what? Let's get let's get rolling here. We got to get this door open." She has a hammer, so she's going to try and open this door. Well, so her first action, she rolls a four. She doesn't have a problem. She's a seasoned adventurer. She smashes that door open, no problem at all. The spawn in the two rooms. So we're going to spawn here first in the blue. One walker, eh, okay, not a problem. Yeah, watch. And in this room, what do we get? We get a walker. So, one walker, one walker, not the biggest of issues. So that was Nelly taking one action. She has a free move action, so she's going to go right into this room in the walker's face. Now she still has two actions left, so she will attack this walker once. She rolls a five. She smashes him down with a hammer, getting rid of him, and that's going to give her one experience point. She's got the first kill for uh, this episode or for this scenario. All right, Nelly. She still has an action left. For her final action, she will do a search. She's in a room here with no zombies, and she finds an axe. Okay, it's an axe. Not bad. She's just going to put that in her other hand. So she has a hammer in one hand, she has an axe in the other. So she's ready to kill things. And that's Nelly's turn. Up next is Arnod, who is way up north. So let's take a look and see what he's doing. All right, Arnod, way up here. He has a short bow, so he's going to just start shooting at this walker. I think that's really all he's going to do. So it hits on a 3 plus range of 0 or 1. 
And whoops, the die is way off the I'll roll it again. He rolls a six. Wow. So he pegs off this walker. No problem at all. That's going to give him one experience point. And I do believe... Um, is he going to just not do anything? I believe Dead Eye Walkers either shoot or move. I don't think they move and shoot at the same time. So we're not really in any danger. They're all going to move here unless we get Dead Eye Walkers activate twice, <laughs> which could happen, but it's not likely. Ah, again, he can move in there, but he's going to get pegged by three shots then. So I think. He's just going to end his turn. So we took out the one walker. And up next will be Anne. All right. This is exactly what Anne wanted. She smells blood. Zombie blood. So she uses her bloodlust melee as her first action. Which means she can move up to two spaces and get a free melee attack against a zone she ends her movement in that has zombies in it. So she runs in screaming, yeah, and attacks the walker. So that's her first of three actions. And she has a short sword, hits on a four plus. Oh yeah, no problem. She just runs in there like a crazy woman and slays that walker. That's going to give her an experience point. Still in the blue, we have to get the seven experience to get into uh, the yellow zone. Still has two actions left. For the first of her Two actions, she's going to explore this uh, thing, and it is just nothing much. So that's going to give her five experience uh, for the exploration. She's going to go from one to six experience. Uh, yeah, and so that um, hmm, gives her six experience. She has one, one action left. I think she's just going to move back here. I know she probably should search, but if she gets a zombie... Baldrick only has ranged attack. There's not much he can do about it. And speaking of Baldrick, he's up next and last for this turn. So what is Baldrick going to do? He can't open doors. He can't even open this door to get to that one. So I guess he's going to do one action to move in here. And oh man. Two actions to search. If he finds a zombie, then he has to use Mana Blast. If he misses with Mana Blast, he's going to hit either Nelly or Anne. And, ah, he's bumbling. He will do a search. Searches the room. He finds plenty of arrows. You may reroll ranged attacks once with weapons with arrow keywords. So he wants to get that to Arnaud, who's, of course, halfway across the uh, market square area so he'll just stick that in his backpack for now he has an action left so i think he's actually going to move back out in the street so it was one action two to search three to go back to the street so he's like all right nothing in this room let's get moving okay zooming out we have zombie activation time all right so we can get all the zombie movement in here we have a dead eye walker over here and it's just going to move one space this way we have a fatty way up here. He's just going to move one space out here. And now we have a room full of joy. So we have the necromancer is going to move one space here, followed by the three dead eye walkers. Now they're not going to fire uh, because they can't fire through two doorways. They'd be able to fire into this room, but they can't fire through two doorways at one, no line of sight. So that's all they do. Everybody's moved, and now it is spawn time. Now we have four spawn points, so we're going to do one, two, three, and then the necromancer spawn point. So we're still in the blue. All right, so over here we get a double spawn. Oh my good lord. So that means we're getting two spawns up there. I hate double spawns, but we get a double spawn. We get one dead eye walker, so that's the first... Uh, spawn. We need another spawn at that point, which is uh, one runner. Okay, so we're getting a walker and a runner show up here. Now over on this spot, what do we get for a spawn? We get one walker in the blue. Okay, not too bad. And the necromancer spawn zone is the last one. And what do we get? We get one walker. Okay. Well, not 
terrible, not terrible. And the only problem is up here we only have the dwarf and uh, our nod. However, what's nice is uh, our nod will be going before the dwarf in the next episode. And so he'll be able to use his short bow as much as possible, and then the dwarf can run in and go crazy with his hammer afterwards. Okay, I can't really get everything in here because we got Baldrick, Nelly, and Anne down here, and we got Arnod and Lore Bazaar at the north. So this is Zombicide Black Plague. We're playing quest number two, the Black Book. Oh, and this little crown symbol here, I just put it here to represent that this is where the Black Book is. So we need to get both vault artifacts into our possession. We have to get one of our survivors into the red zone. And we have to retrieve the black book. And that's the win for us. And so far, of course, things starting off relatively quiet. But as you know, this game ramps up in pain rather quickly and hostilely. At just at the moment, you don't want it to. All right, so thanks so much for watching along. This is Zombicide Black Plague Quest 2, The Black Book. We're playing with Baldrick, Lord Bazaar, Nelly, Arnaud, and Anne. Will they be able to pull this one out of the fire? I don't know. This is made for six uh, survivors, and we're only using five. So thanks so much for watching along. Thanks for your comments, suggestions, your subscriptions, your likes. Really appreciate it. Um, this is, once again, Zombicide Black Plague. So thanks so much for watching along. And we'll catch you next time.